And, and part of um, what I think is so interesting about your work is uh, you literally named uh, the blog Rogue Health and Fitness, right? You're going rogue from kind of the standard ideas around what to eat, how to exercise and things like that. And so I thought maybe what we could do is let's start on uh, the diet side, right? Most people are taught uh, kind of a low fat, high carb um, type diet, uh, and they basically eat you know, what they consider to be that food pyramid. You obviously have a, a different view of the world. So maybe kind of talk about uh, the work you've done and, and why you've arrived at something that's different uh, or, or kind of rogue to those uh, traditional uh, recommendations. Okay, great. Um, so I think that a lot of this, a lot of the way people eat um, and, and, you know, how they're recommended to eat and so on, it flows from one one single idea, and that idea is a wrong idea, and and it's basically the idea that saturated fat causes heart disease. This this goes back uh, to uh, you know the 40s and 50s, and and the nutritionist Ansel Keys and the cholesterol idea, and so on, and and they hit on the idea that um, saturated fat was killing people. Um, it was it was uh, a huge problem at the time. Um, heart disease, uh, it's still a big problem, but it hits mostly much older people now. At the time, they were looking at a lot of middle-aged men dropping dead of heart attacks and so on. Um, so they hit on this idea, and in retrospect, it you know looking at looking at what we know now and the research, it seems wholly mistaken. Um, Nevertheless, by the late 1970s, the U.S. government had latched onto it and put out official dietary recommendations that we should avoid eating uh, a lot of saturated fat, that uh, we should eat a lot of whole grains, that fruits and vegetables were uniquely healthy, and so on and so forth. And that is the basis for how, how most people are eating now. I, I, let me back up a little, For, uh, as far as the saturated fat goes, there have been uh, several um, meta-analyses, which are basically reviews of studies done in the last decade that have shown that intake of dietary saturated fat is not related to coronary heart disease. Um, so um, I come from a perspective of, of thinking, why do, why does the Western world, the modern Western world, suffer from these diseases like heart disease and cancer and Alzheimer's, diabetes, uh, and so on, and and why have these all increased in recent years, um, and why do some other societies not have them essentially? Um, you know, for for example, there is um, um, there's a there's an island in the South Pacific, the um, Catavans, the island of Catava, where these people live, and they have no chronic disease whatsoever, as far as they found. You know, people have gone there and investigated them, and that def despite the fact that seventy five percent of the men smoke cigarettes. Um, so you know, I, I mean. I'm not, you know, not saying that cigarettes are benign by any means, but I'm just saying, I'm pointing out this fact. Why do these people have seemingly no chronic disease? If, if you go back in time, why did these, even, even in the Western world, why were these diseases so scarce and why are they common now? Well, uh, my, my main conclusion is that um, chronic diseases are, as someone has said, they might be better termed the diseases of processed food. So um, in the late 19th century, there were technologies developed, for example, that uh, were able to make white flour. Um, there, was, there was little to no white flour before that, but then they, you know, with, with the Industrial Revolution and these gigantic milling machines, they were able to make white flour and everybody started using it. Um, sugar has been around a little bit longer, but it became a lot cheaper. 
Um, and so as it became cheaper and cheaper, people started using more of it. Um, a couple hundred years ago in the, in the US, you know, per capita consumption was like five pounds a year or something like that, whereas it's, you know, in the range of 150 pounds now. Um, and then one other, one other invention um, that happened in the late 19th century was they figured out how to, to extract oils from seeds. Um, so uh, they, this started out actually as a way to try to um, make cotton seeds, which were a waste product, profitable to get something out of them. And they did. And ultimately, they made Crisco um, the the last the CO on that last part of Crisco stands for cottonseed oil, um, and they applied this to a number you know of different oils. So now, for example, soybean oil is is the most common oil, and you know corn oil, canola oil, you know etc. All these oils. So you put those all together, and you've got modern food. Um, and you put them, you put them together in a certain way, in certain combinations, and you've got modern ultra-processed food that people eat huge amounts of. So in the United States, um, approximately 60% of calories in the average diet comes from these ultra-processed foods. So that's a huge amount. So these are, these are the, what I'm talking about specifically are the kind of foods that come in boxes and bags that are brightly labeled, have brand names that are found in the middle aisles of the supermarket. Um, and, and that's what most people eat. So that is what has caused our modern epidemic of chronic disease in my estimation. Now, we've had even, um, you know, a lot of this goes back to the invention of agriculture, right? So, the, so before agriculture, everyone was a hunter gatherer. Everyone ate meat um, and whatever whatever wild uh, vegetation they could gather. Um, and as far as we know, they suffered from none of these chronic diseases that we have now. Then, when agriculture agriculture was invented, people started eating lots of grains um, and they started suffering from a lot of chronic diseases. Um, for example, a, a really good example of this is that before agriculture, the average man was something like five foot nine inches tall. After agriculture, they were five foot three. And there was all kinds of, uh, you know, with, and with the same, you know, proportionate uh, decrease in women. And you know, they found in skeletals, skeletal remains that have been studied and so on, chronic diseases, osteoarthritis, so on and so forth. Infectious diseases also, also became very prominent. At any rate, we lived like that for a long time. Um, in, in recent years, say the 19th century, people started getting much taller again due to better nutrition. Um, but then we took a second hit. We took this industrial food hit. Um, that I was just talking about starting around 1900, say. Um, heart disease started right at, rising as, a, as an epidemic, basically. Um, in, in 1900, um, there was essentially zero heart disease. Uh, famous uh, uh, cardiologist, Paul Dudley White, who, who was the most famous cardiologist at mid-century, said that when he was training in the early years of the century, nobody ever talked about coronary artery disease because nobody had it. No, they didn't know it existed. And then people started having heart attacks and so on till by the mid-20th mid century, um, you, you had huge, you know, huge numbers of heart attacks and so on, heart disease epidemic. So then, you know, fast forward to a couple of decades ago, and then we had these dietary guidelines after they decided that saturated fat was bad. Um, and then the obesity epidemic started going right about that time. Is that a coincidence? I don't think so. Um, there are other factors, I believe, but um, the fact that 
people were told to eat less meat and animal products and to eat more carbohydrates, um, I, I believe very much contributed to it. Um, so there we are. There, there's, there's the food element, and that's that. That is my explanation of why this has happened. 